Around 18 months ago, my life changed due to a roundabout. You maybe stood there thinking, how on earth can somebody's life be changed by a roundabout, right? And though I didn't forget which way to go around, and had some awful accident or anything, don't worry. But I did pass this roundabout twice every day to and from work. And I did get distracted by something. My attention was grasped by litter. It literally covered the roundabout. It looked disgusting and untidy. And I knew something had to be done about it, but I didn't know what that thing was. So I asked myself a question. I said, Ryan, what can you do? After mulling this question over for a couple of days and challenging those self-defeating thoughts that I know we all share, such as, what are you going to be able to do on your own and why do you care? And is it your responsibility? After challenging these negative, self-defeating thoughts, I was able to push through them and arrive at an idea. This idea was to assemble a team of people to litter pick the roundabout, monitor it, maintain it, I was going to come up with some really cheesy jingle, uh, and I was, going to call it cle uh, I was going to call it Cleaning Round You. And the jingle is going to be something really cheesy about how litter makes me cry, because cry is an acronym of Cleaning Round You. Pretty cringy, right? So anyway, I took this idea to a handful of friends and family members, and they were pretty quick to point out that not only was this a bad idea, but it had a terrible name and an even worse jingle. And the chance of getting permission from Highways England to access one of the busiest roundabouts in the city was slim to none. So I had to admit it, they may have been right, the idea was pretty bad. But still, the problem remained, and I still had to pass this roundabout twice every day to and from work, and it really began to bug me. So I asked myself the question again, Ryan, what can you do? By asking myself this question again, I was able to look at the problem in a different way. I was able to look at the problem more for what it was, not where it was. Litter. Litter was the problem. And litter is everywhere. I work on the railway, which can send me to the very top of the UK, to the very bottom, side to side. Wherever there's rail, there's a good chance I've worked there before, I probably will do in the future. And this means that I obviously travel a lot as well. And it was on my travels that I also began to notice litters everywhere. It's on the side of our roads, it's in our neighbourhoods, in towns, and it's in our natural environment too. So I started to think, okay, well, if we've got to do something about the litter on the roundabout, maybe I could do something about litter as a whole and help the bigger picture. So I did what any millennial or anybody in this day and age does nowadays, I googled for solutions. Lo and behold, a load of litter picking groups came up. Ah, aha, found my solution. But again, I was faced with some problems. These litter picking groups always met on the same day of the week, on the same date of the month, in the same location. For somebody who works away weekends and weekdays, this was a problem. And I could take a good guess that if this was a problem for me, it's probably a problem for lots of other people as well, who want to help and who want to take part, but aren't able to. So I asked myself that question again. Can you tell what it's going to be? Ryan, what can you do? I knew if I was going to set anything up, it would have to address not only the problems that I was facing, but the problems that anybody else may face as well. It would have to be available to everybody, accessible at all times and as convenient as possible for people to use. With all these considerations in mind, I knew an event called The Big Suit was coming up where you can pitch an idea and potentially win some money to kickstart that into reality. So I wrote down my idea, which was to deliver litter pick equipment on loan to whoever may want to use it, wherever, whenever, for free. I called this project Clean Lincoln Everywhere and Now, which just so happens to have an acronym of CLEAN, which I'm sure you could agree is much better than CRY. And I submitted it as a pitch. I was really pleased to find out I got accepted, and along came the day of the event, and it works like this. Each team or individual gets five minutes to say their pitch. 
Once they've had their five minutes, there's a short question and answer period from the audience. The audience is made up of 50 members of the public, each paying five pound a ticket, so that's 250 pounds. Then once all the pitches have been heard and questions have been asked, everybody breaks and has soup. And they discuss over soup what they liked, what they didn't like, about the ideas, not the soup, probably the soup. And then they vote on which one they think should win the money. So 250 pounds is a huge helping hand for anybody wanting to start their idea into motion. It's a great idea, works really well. My name had just been called, it was my turn to speak. Being completely honest with you guys, I was terrified. The thought of standing up in front of 50 people to talk about an idea that I was passionate about was a really daunting thing to do. I felt really vulnerable. And I know that seems daft now because there were 50 people there and there's 100 of you here today, but believe me, it was a scary thing to do. So I remember being stood there, regurgitating these facts and figures about why litter is such a serious issue, such as if we continue littering the way that we are, by 2050, there'll be more plastic waste in our oceans than fish. And there are loads more concerning statistics like that when you begin to look for them, and I urge you to. I then proceeded to talk about my idea and ran out of time. So, as you can prob probably guess, and rightly so, I got hammered with questions by the audience, most of which I couldn't answer, so I couldn't wait for that to be over, for me to get back to my seat as quickly as possible, shrivel up into a ball of embarrassment, and wait for it all to be over. When it came time for the announcements of the winner, I was really pleased to find out I came third out of three. <laughs> but still, where I found the true value in this event was in the discussions that I had with people afterwards. People coming to me and saying things that they liked about the idea, but things that they thought could be done better a different way. And it's parts of those discussions which are an integral part of what clean is today. Such as somebody who said, Ryan, you said you want to deliver the litter pick equipment, but you work away weekends and weekdays. Can you see how this may not be the most sustainable of an idea? Have you thought about using lockers? Again, just being completely honest with you guys, when I first heard that idea, I thought, that'll never work. Well, it turns out, it works pretty well. Because after some serious thought, it's exactly what I set out to do. Fast forward 18 months, and here we are today with a small enthusiastic team and two of what we call cleanups fully set up around the city with more plans to be launched within the next year. A cleanup is somewhere where people can access litter pick equipment on loan for free, and each cleanup is individual adapting to its location. We have one at Sports Centre, which is available seven days a week, long hours. As you can see, super simple setup, just a safe space to um, store litter pick equipment. We have one at a football stadium, which is available 24 hours, seven days a week, which again, super simple concept, just an outside locker. And we're just set to launch one at Global Fast Food Franchise, which will also be available 24 hours, seven days a week, using the same concepts as the football stadium hub. Between these hubs, we've empowered hundreds of people to take action in cleaning the places they love by loaning them the equipment, <coughs> and offering the advice and support needed to do so. We've worked with such a wide array of people from families to individuals, businesses to festivals, children's parties to community groups. We've also uh, very organically had the opportunity to work with schools as well, going in, giving educational talks, and learning them the equipment. I truly believe a lasting solution starts with education. I want to introduce you to somebody. This is Nancy. She's a student at one of the schools where we gave an educational talk on the damage that litter can cause. She was so inspired, she spent most of her summer holidays litter picking the town where she lives. I want to introduce you to Joyce. She's a 98-year-old resident at a care home that specializes in dementia, where we did a litter pick with them in conjunction with the Great British Spring Clean 
run by Key Britain Tidy. We believe she was this year's oldest participant in the national campaign. So we have two examples here of people at completely different ends of the spectrum. A young girl out cleaning a neighbourhood and some elderly residents out cleaning the local grounds. Clean has shown that through education and through making a solution as convenient as possible for people to use, every part of the community can be reached in striving for a more environmentally conscious, litter-free future. There's been many points in my journey though where I could have given up and accepted defeat. But by constantly asking myself if there's something else I could do when I was faced with problems, and by pursuing the ideas that developed through the natural process of being helped by people, it's allowed Clean to evolve and empower hundreds of people on their shared mission of cleaning the places they love. I want to share a quote with you which has given me a reassuring push through those difficult times. It's by Stephen Hawking and he said, however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do to succeed at. It matters that you don't just give up. By setting up as many cleanups as possible, we're making a solution to litter pollution accessible, available, and as convenient as possible for every part of the community to be used, whether it's us setting them up or anybody else, given the maximum chance of reversing the damage of litter pollution. So I want to ask you, what problems are you emotionally invested in? And what solutions have you found to those problems? And what problems have you found to those solutions? Because remember, there is always something you can do. Thank you.